Hey guys and welcome back to the bottom engine 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to show you how to create a damage indicator so when you take damage you're going to have kind of a blood splatter appear on your screen. So let me hit play and show you what this is going to look like now. So in this example I'm taking damage when I press a keyboard event, however this works for whenever you have damage so if you get shot, if you take full damage, anything along those lines and what it's going to be is simply we get the effect come up on screen and it'll fade out afterwards as well. Now the sound effect and the actual health decrease I've set up in a separate video, however you don't need to watch that video for this to work. But I'm not doing the damage system in this, I'm just making this appear on screen. So I fall off here, we get our damage, the blood comes up on screen and it fades out as well as so it fades in, fades out. You can have it not fade in, not fade out, just appear and disappear, make it stay on screen for longer. So here I have it on screen for I think a second. Again, you can customize this fully to get it working great for you. So without further ado, this is what we're going to make today. So let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first step we want to take is we want to actually create our material for this. So I've got this texture here which I'll open up and it's simply just this. We've got the blood effect around the screen like so. You can make your own, you can download one and I'll leave a link in the description down below to where I got this one from. Again, making sure it's a PNG with a transparent background like that. But once you've downloaded it, we're going to right click on it and create a material. And I'm just going to leave the name as blood mat and open up straight away. What we want to do in here is we want to change the material domain from surface to user interface and we can change the blend mode from opaque to translucent. RGB goes into final color, the A or the alpha goes into opacity. And this just means we can use this inside of a widget and it will still also have the transparent background as well, which is obviously what we want. Now there are many different ways of doing this, so we can do this via a widget and user interface like we're doing here, or you can do this via the post process volume as well. However, I just felt it's a little bit of an easier method and it can in some cases be more efficient as well to use a widget instead of the post process. So that's the way I'm doing it in today's video. And once you've done that, we can apply and then close that like so. Then we want to actually set up and create our widget. So that's very simple. So to do that, we're going to right click, go to user interface, go to widget blueprint, and I'm going to name this one blood splatter or damage indicator, and I'm going to open it up straight away. And in here, what I want to do is just drag and drop an image on here with the position X at 0, position Y at 0, size X to be 1920 and size Y to be 1080. And I'm going to anchor it to the full screen. And this just means the image takes up the whole screen. And I'm going to set the image to be my blood splatter that we just made. So I named it blood mat there. And as you can see, this is what it's going to look like on the screen. So we have our blood effect here. Again, customize this to get it perfect looking for you. But this is what I'm going to have. So I'm going to compile and save that. Next, I want to set up the animation so we can fade it on and fade it out, or fade it in, fade it out, sorry. So to do that, it's very simple. We're just going to hit the plus animation in the bottom left down here and name it fade. Now, if you don't have this animations tab, what you can do is go to window and then just hit animations. And you want to make sure you have animations and timeline both ticked like so. Once you've done that, you can select the fade animation we've made and also select the image here, so the blood splat and we're going to hit the plus track on the timeline, get in the image 61, or whatever you've named it. And hit the plus track there, I'm going to get a color and opacity, because we want to change the opacity, so it fades in from being completely see-through to being fully seeable. So transparent to non-transparent. And we're going to open that up, because we want to be messing with the A, which is the alpha, which is the opacity. So we're going to change it from one to zero, so it starts off faded out completely like this, so it fades in. And then this kind of white bar we have on the timeline here, I'm going to drag out to be as long as I want. I want this to last around 0.3 seconds. So it's going to take 0.3 seconds to fade in and fade out. So that's how long I've got it on for. So I'm then going to move all the way to the end of the timeline and change the opacity to be 1. And then if we hit play, we can see this is what it's going to look like fading in. So it will fade in, reverse it, it will fade out. So again, Get that to look however you want. You might want it to take a little bit longer. So you just drag it out and drag the keyframe out as well. And that's what it's going to look like. That's our very simple fade in animation. And we can use that to both fade in and out because we can just reverse it to fade out like so. So with that done, we can compile, save, and go over to the graph here like so. I'm going to delete event pre-construct and event tick and use the event construct. To do that, I'm going to drag out the fade here. So our fade animation. And out of this, I'm just going to get play animation. The target will be self, the in animation will be our fade. We'll leave everything else the same and we want to play it forwards. 
because this is going to fade in the widget when we load it up. So when we create the widget, it will fade it in, which is obviously what we want. And then underneath this, we also want to set up fading it out. So to do that, we're going to right click and add a custom event, naming it fade out or remove from screen, anything on those lines. And I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to select the fade animation and play animation there leaving all the settings the same apart from the play mode which will go from forward to reverse because like I say to fade it out we just want to reverse it the same way how when we open a door we just reverse the animation to close it it's the same way with fading in and out so we can compile save and we can actually close the widget as that is all we need to do in there although sorry there is one other thing we need to do in that widget sorry my bad after fading out the animation we also want to remove it from the viewport so remove it from our screen so it's no longer there because that will kind of lag out the game a bit after a certain amount of time if you have so many. So what we want to do is hold down D, left click to get a delay, with the duration being how long this animation is, which for me was 0.4 seconds I believe, I can just check here, if I select the animation it is 0.4 seconds. So in the duration I'm going to put 0.4 and I've completed I'll get remove from parent like so. Again, this delay here will be however long your animation is. And if you want to quickly change the speed of it without having to go through and change the keyframes here, you can just increase or decrease the playback speed. So if I put that up to 2, it will take 0.2 seconds. If I change the playback speed to 0.5, it will take 0.8 seconds. So you see that there, very simple and easy to do. So again, I'm going to compile, save, and close that. Then the rest of the code you want to do is in the player blueprint. So I'm going to open that up. So for me, that's content, third person VP blueprints third person character but for you this could be third first what if you've named it and once we're in here we just want to find some empty space and I'm also going to get the event begin play node so if you just search for it event begin play you can see if you already used it I haven't if you have it will take you to it and if you have already used it you can hold on s left click to catch a sequence connecting then zero into the code you have now and then one into this new code we're about to make however I don't need that as I haven't used it yet and all we want to do off of event begin play is create a widget, so create widget, with the class being the widget we just made, which I named blood splatter, and we're going to right click the return value, promoting it to a variable, naming it di ref for damage indicator reference, and obviously you can name it whatever you like, but that makes sense for me. You might want to name it blood ref or anything on those lines. And we're going to compile and save that. And that is just because we want to actually have a reference to this so we can play the fading in and out animations. And so what I'm going to do is go to wherever we start decreasing the health. So for me, I have a function which does this. So I've got a function named decrease health. Now I do have a video on creating this and setting up if you'd like to do that, if you think this is how you want to do it. However, if you don't have this, just go to wherever you start decreasing the player's health. And we're going to drag out the input here and come back to this later. So want to make sure that you know you're going to need to find where you decrease the health. But before we do that, we want to do something else, and that is decide whether or not we want to add this widget on screen or remove it. So to do that, I'm going to create another function. So I'm going to hit the plus function here, naming this one damage indicator, like so. And I'm going to add an input here, naming this one add to screen, question mark. And that way you can set that to be either true or false, obviously depending on whether or not you want to add it to the screen. And so then we're going to hold down B, left click to get a branch, connecting the condition up to there and the execution on there as well. And off of true, so if we do want to add it to the screen, what we're going to do is get a reference to our DI reference here, so to our widget. And out of this, we're just going to simply add to viewport. So it's going to create the widget and add it to our viewport, which will then obviously play the fading in animation. And then when we want to remove it, what we're going to do, so for false, if we don't want to add it to the screen, we're going to come out of DI reference and remove from parent, or what did I name it, fade out. Yeah, call function fade out there. Again, going into false. So we can compile and save that, as that's what we need to do in there. So we're gonna decide whether or not we need to add to the screen, and if we do or don't, we're gonna fade it in or out, depending on that value. So let's go back to where we are decreasing the health, which again, for me, is in this function, and we're gonna call this other function. So I'm gonna call the damage indicator function there, and I'm gonna tick add to screen because here we are taking damage, so this is where we start taking damage, so I want to add it to the screen. So you see I've ticked it there, and what it's going to do is that'll be true, so we'll add it to the screen, which will work perfectly for us. And that is all we need to simply do, it's very easy. And then what I'm going to do is also set up where I'm taking damage. 
So again, this is how we take damage. Now we need to go where we're taking damage. So if this is for your fall damage or anything like that, it's essentially where you are calling this function. However, what you might want to do instead is go into a macro because a macro allows you to use a delay, functions don't. So like I say, you might want to create this into a macro instead, which is very simple. You just hit the plus macro here, naming this one take damage. And what we can do is just add an input, naming this in, and it's going to be an execution and an output, naming it out, which will also be an execution. And what I'm going to do is just copy over the code in here. So I think I will just change it over so it's easier for you. So just copy the code that's in here, which again is just taking damage. And I'm going to paste that in here like so, and it all works in here. So using a macro instead of a function is much better because again, a macro allows the use of delays. So here, what I'm going to do is offer the false here. So I've got the print string, but you can just come straight out of false and hold down D left click to get a delay. And the duration, I want to be however long I want it to be on screen for. So I want it to be on screen for, let's say, 1.5 seconds, so one and a half seconds. Or let's put it up to two. Again, put it whatever you want, so even maybe three. And I've completed, all we want to do is get the damage indicator function again and untick add to screen. So it's then going to take it off our screen and fade out like so. And then I might as well connect those in there. However, the outputs isn't necessary. However, you can do that if you want, like so. So this is what we've set up. I hope you managed to follow along with your current setup and merge this in there with it. Or if you followed my previous tutorial, that's very easy to do as well. So what we've done is we've set up a widget in which we have the blur splatter on there. We can fade it in and out, depending on whether we want to fade it in or add it to our screen or not, which again is dependent on whether we are taking damage or not, or when we take damage and then we stop taking damage. And I'm also going to set up a very quick function to take damage. So I'm just going to use the L keyboard event off of pressed. I'm just going to call my macro of take damage there, which is why it's very simple and easy to put it in a macro because then you can just call that code wherever you want. So I'm going to hit compile. And if we hit play, we can test this out. So if I hit L, that's going to come up on screen. Three seconds later, it's going to be removed from the screen like so. That works perfectly. So again, I'll do this. Imagine that's full damage. When you land, you take damage. That comes up on screen and then goes off like so as well. Again, this works perfectly. So again, if you need any help merging it with your current code, just let me know in the comments down below and I'll be more than happy to help. But I think that'll be it for this video. If you've done everything we want to do, like I just went over, we've set up the system in which when we take damage, we can have this damage indicator blood splatter effect on the screen like so, which looks quite good. You see it in a lot of games. And again, it's very customizable to do it when you want, how you want, for how long you want, with or without the fades, and all the good stuff like that. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.